We've come here for you. All right, we live all over the 757, most of us, all right? We even got brothers in the 804. And we come all the way to Newport News to teach you how to get salvation. All right, give me Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. All right, you said your name was Sean? Say it again. Sean? All right, I'm Officer Caillou, again, and we've come to teach you how to get salvation. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do? that I may have eternal life. So this brother came to Christ and said, what good things shall, can I do that I may get eternal life? All right? Do you want eternal life? You say, sure, why are you talking so, so soft, man? I want you to speak loud. I want you to speak loud. I'm going to tell you why. We're going to come back there. Get Isaiah chapter 58. All right? I want you to speak loud. I want you to speak loud. My sister right here. Do you want to uh, uh, marry a, a bold lion or do you want to marry a... A weak sheep. Which one? Which one? My sister over there, do you want to marry a bold lion or you want to marry a weak sheep? Which one? I'm talking to y'all. I'm talking to y'all. Which one? My sister. A bold, you see that? Are you married? You're not married. Do you want to be married one day? Say it again. You want to be single forever, my brother? You say you still think, all right, let me ask you this. Do you want to be celibate forever? Huh? All right then, you know what that really means? That really means that you want to get married. Because you can't just have sex, by, you can't just have sex as a single person not married. That's evil, that's sin according to the Bible, you're gonna be judged for that. Right. You understand, read what you got. Isaiah chapter 58 verse one. Listen to what the Bible says, and this is why we come out and speak loud to edify our people, come on. Cry aloud! What's the Bible say? Cry aloud! Are we crying aloud out here? Yes, we are, come on. Spare not! Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. You ever heard a quiet trumpet before? Have you ever heard a quiet trumpet? My sister, you ever heard a quiet trumpet? No, you haven't. Trumpets are loud. They're loud. You understand? That's how God tells us to go out and to teach the men and the women in the streets. Right. So you know how we have to respond to that? We have to come out here and speak loud to our people. Not only that, what else do we have to do? And show my people their transgressions. We gotta show our people their sins, the things that they're doing wrong. You understand the things that they're doing wrong? My sister right here, come close. I can barely see you. Come around, come around, come around. I want y'all to get involved. You two with the cat on your shoulder. Come over here, come over here. I want you to get involved, all right? They saw us yesterday on Rip Rap. All praise is up. Now we back at it again. We don't stop. You understand? We not gonna stop till kingdom come. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? You know why? Because this place is evil. And if we stop, then we'll be out here committing all types of sins like adulteries, like smoking weed, right. you understand? Like having sex with women that's not our, our, our wives, you understand? Man with man, if we stay out here long enough, everybody be a homosexual. Right. Because this world is so damn evil, you understand what I'm saying? That's what we will, that's what we will uh, uh, turn into. This world will corrupt us if we don't come out and cry aloud and show our people their transgressions. This helps us keep ourselves accountable because if we don't come out and teach, right? then I might be able to sit at home and, and, and be in my own sin. But if I'm coming out to teach you, I gotta be right. You understand? Or I'll be what? A hypocrite. You understand? So the Bible tells us to cry aloud, to speak loud, to show our people their transgressions. Um, from there, go to Micah chapter five. I think it's verse eight that I want. Because this is what we want from you, all right? And you too. What's your name? Right here, you. What's your name? Yolanda. Yolanda? Jolanda. And what's your name? Go by? I go by honey. You go by honey. All right. Read what you got. The book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 8. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles. So you're the remnant of Jacob. That's who you are. Why? Because you're an Israelite. Right? You know what tribe you come from? Your father. He's a so-called African-American. Right? You come from the tribe of Judah. That's right. That's one of the tribes of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. He had 12 sons. One of those sons was Judah. That's who you come from. So when it says the remnant of Jacob, it's talking about you. Read it right. again from the top. And the remnant of Jacob. That's you. Come on. Shall be among the Gentiles. Shall be among the Gentiles. You know who the Gentiles are? The so-called white man. That's a Gentile. The so-called Chinese man. That's a Gentile. That's right. right. The so-called Japanese man. 
That's a Gentile. That's right. The East Indians, all right? Today we call them the Persians, all right? Or back then we called them the Persians. Today we call them the East Indians. That's a Gentile, according to the Bible. You understand? The true Egyptians, Gentiles. You following me? You're not a Gentile. You're a child of God. Right. You come from the, uh, the tribe of, of, of Judah. Right. You're not a Gentile. You're supposed to be amongst the Gentiles. Come on. In the midst of many people. In the midst of many people. Come on. As a lion. As a, as a sheep. As a lion. As a quiet sheep. As a lion. As a what? A lion. A lion is bold, right? But when you're talking up here with us, we can barely hear you. I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta listen real good to hear you. You understand? I, you, the, everyone out here would be able to hear me if I put this microphone down. Why? Because I'm going to be speaking loud. I'm going to be speaking real loud. So we want you to speak loud because you're a man and God says that you need to be like a lion amongst the Gentiles. You understand? Not like a sheep. You need to be like a lion, a strong, mighty king of the jungle. That's how you have to view yourself. When you view yourself that way, you'll carry yourself that way. You understand? The woman over here says she want to get married to a strong, bold lion. You understand? That's what we're trying to build our men up to be. Because if you're not that, what's going to separate you from a woman? Nothing, right? So then we'll have women today like these two sisters right here. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. You have, come here, come here, come here. You have women today like these two sisters, right, who say, I can, I, 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 can uh, I can deal with a man or a woman. You understand? It ain't no difference. Ain't no difference between a man and a woman. You understand? The, the women today, they're just as strong as the men today. That's confusion. It's not supposed to be like that. Right? So the sisters shouldn't be speaking louder than the men. The men should be speaking louder than the women. You agree with that, sister? You agree with that? Yes, right? I'm going to show you why. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to show you why. I'm not just making this stuff up. We're reading the Bible. I'm going to tell you why. You say you don't agree with that. You agree with that? Say it again. I can't hear you. The man and woman should what? I feel like a man and a woman should be on equal ground. They both you, need that's how you feel, but that's not what the Bible says. Right, right. We've come out here to teach you the Bible because the, the, our leadership, when I say our leadership, most times that's our fathers and our mothers, right? Or you can say the Christian pastor. They didn't teach us the Bible. They didn't teach us it right. All right. right? Read what you got. Verse 3. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Did you hear that? The Bible says the head of a man, every man is who? Is who? It's Christ. Come on. And the head of the woman. The head of the woman. Now we're talking about the woman. Now we're talking about the woman. Right? Come on. Is the man. Wait, who's the head of the woman? The head of the woman is the man. Who's the head of the woman? The man. Did you hear that, sister? We're reading the Bible. Why are you walking away? Come on. As soon as we start talking about the man being over the woman, you got somewhere to go? You got somewhere to go as soon as we start talking about this scripture right here? Come on, since we're trying to get you right, we're trying to teach you truth according to the Bible, and you're leaving. Right. How are you going to fix yourself if you can't be honest with yourself? Yeah. My, this, this, man, this, is, this, this, this is why you a lying, bro. Because you can look me in my face and say, yeah, you're right. You understand? I ain't been really talking like a lion. I've been talking like a sheep out here. But I'm going to fix it. And you're going to stand right here and listen. We need men to rise up and to do the same thing. That's so we can right. set all these women in order. Right. right. They're not going to get in order till you get in order. Deep. Once you get in order, we can set all the women in order. You understand? But until that day, we're going to have women relying on women. We're going to have women dealing with women just like they men. We, that's, that's evil according to the Bible. Right. You understand what I'm saying? That's evil according to the Bible. Now read the scripture again so you can hear. Don't walk away. Come on. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. I didn't make that up. The Bible said that. That's why I do it. You understand? The Bible said thou shalt not kill. I didn't make that up. The Bible said that so I can't do it. The Bible said I can't steal. I can't just go in the store and steal nothing. Why? Because the Bible said that. Right. The same way the Bible said thou shalt not steal, the Bible says that a man is to be over the woman. That's right. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. Guess what? Is the children on the same level as the woman? Is the children on the same level as their mother? What'd you say? No. Is the children on the same level as the mother? No. That's easy. My sister, the children on the same level as the mother in your household? No. You see how easy that is? The children is not on the same level as the mother. So why is it so difficult when we say that the head of the woman is the man? 
It's all in the same verse. It's all right there in the same verse. You understand? So you do have authority. It's just not over the man. That's right. You have authority over the children. Right. So the same way that you want to set the men in order, how about you use all of that might to set your children in order? Because we got some bad kids out here. Say it, say you understand it. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. We got some bad kids out here. They terrorists in these neighborhoods. You know what I'm talking about? They terrorists out here. All right. So we need a woman to stop focusing on being on the same level as the man. Bring it up. We need a woman to start focusing on getting these children in order. That's what we need. That's what we need. You got to, yes, what's your question? What is a woman without a child or a man? What do you call that? A daughter, a daughter, a princess, a daughter of Sarah. That's what we call her, a princess, a daughter of Sarah. You understand? That's what we call them. They're still here to do what? Then what are the sisters, the sing, the ones that's not married here to do? Give me Titus chapter 2, because you have to learn from somebody, all right? You got to learn from somebody. That's a very good question. We're going to show you. But your ultimate goal should be to get married, not to stay single forever. Do you want to be married one day? You say no. You never want to be married. Never. Right, so you, so you do want to be married one day. Yes. You do. You, you, that, that's because you don't have hope. You understand? But we're going to give you hope. That's what we're going to do. Right now you don't have hope. So you say, I don't know if I'm going to get married. Maybe I'm not this or that. No, the Bible says that you were created for the man. That's, right. that's what the Bible says. That's your whole existence is to serve the Israelite man. Right. All right. Hold that. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to come back. I'm going to show you that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want you to read verse 8. The reason that you were created, my sister, was to serve the Israelite man that keeps God's commandments. Right. I'm going to show you it. Read what you got. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. For the man is not of the woman. Start at verse, read verse 7. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. Did you hear that? The man is the what? The image and the glory of God. That's the glory of God right there. My brother right here is the glory of God. Right. You understand? In his righteousness, you understand? He is the glory of God. The woman wasn't created as the glory of God. Right. The woman was created to be the glory of the man. That's right. Come on. But the woman is the glory of the man. Come on. But the man is not of the woman. The man is what? It's not of the woman. Come on. But the woman of the man. But the woman is what? Of the man. The woman is of who? The man. Come on. Neither was the man created for the woman. Now I want you to listen good to this part right here. Read that again. Neither was the man created for the woman. Did you hear that? The man wasn't created for the woman. Did you hear that? The man wasn't created for the woman. Come on. But the woman. But who? The woman. But the woman. Come on. For the man. She was created for the man. So you can't say that I never want to get married. That doesn't make sense. It's not biblical. You're going to live your life unsatisfied. Right. You understand? You're going to live your life not fulfilled. You understand? You're going to live your life trying to escape reality. You're going to live your life doing drugs. You're going to live your life uh, searching and running after pleasures that leave you not satisfied. That's how you're going to live your life. Because you weren't created for that. Titus chapter 2. This is what you were created to do. This is where you start as a single woman. You start right here in the book of Titus chapter 2. All right? Read what you got. Titus chapter 2 verse 3. The aged woman likewise. We talking to all y'all women out here. All right? All y'all women out here should be learning from women of God that love their husband. Learning from women of God that fear their husband. Learning from women of God that show reverence to their husband. Come on. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Not false accusers. Not given too much wine. So as a single sister, you shouldn't be a false accuser. You know what that is? Somebody that gossip. You shouldn't be out here gossiping. You shouldn't be out here doing that. You shouldn't be out here lying on people. You know it's a lot of sisters? You know it's a lot of sisters that got brothers locked up right now for lies? Right. Could you believe that? Is that a false? Is that something that's very far-fetched for you? It's a lot of sisters that got bro my brother right here. Do you know anybody that's got locked up over a lie that a woman told? You see that? So the Bible says as a single sister, you shouldn't be out here falsely accusing nobody. Nobody. That's what you should be practicing right now. As a single sister, come on. Not given to much wine. 
Teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. What good things do you know how to teach? I'm gonna ask you. What good things could you teach a younger you? Huh? Say it again. To tell the truth. That's a good. That's a good uh, uh, characteristic. To tell the truth. Very good. What else could you teach? What good things could you teach a younger you? Loyalty, loyalty, all praises to the Most High. Loyalty to who? Loyalty to who? Loyalty to who? You don't want to say who? No, loyalty to who? I want you to tell me. Okay, loyalty to yourself, but what does that look like? Loyalty to yourself. How about loyalty to the Most High God? Right. How about you start with that? Because when you're loyal to him, you'll be loyal to everybody else. Your husband won't have to worry about you if you're loyal to the Most High because you won't cheat on him because you know that the Most High says that you're going to get put to death if you do that. Since you fear the Most High, you're going to be loyal to who? Your husband. You see how that works? So you start off with loyalty to the Most High God. But the only way you can be loyal to the Most High God is if you know what's written in his book. If you know what's written in his instructions, you have to know what he says to do and what he says don't do, what to stay away from. You have to know that. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. is community. Nation is children with role